Hey everyone, before we get started, I'd like to announce my new podcast that I'll be hosting. I don't have a name for it yet, but it's just me unscripted talking about my experience with the following week's game. You can listen to them all for just $1 a month over on Patreon. So, if you want a sneak peek into my thoughts and not just the positive ones, go check it out. You can also find all original music produced for the channel, such as the outro songs or even the song that I wrote. Your support means everything, and I hope you enjoy the video. Montana. Something you can never take away from Far Cry are the varied settings it gives us. Africa, a tropical island, totally not Cuba, and now American Montana. And going to a setting more recognizable and relatable to a higher percentage of the player base is a good way to grab interest in your new title and raise awareness about cults today. Is that giving them too much credit? Fuck it. I just crawl at home. If you're subscribed, you would have seen my post that I did not like this game. On that note, if you're not subscribed to this cult of positivity, <laughs> I'm so fing clever. Then what are you doing? My issue I have with Far Cry 5 is that there is a complete lack of character development outside of the main four baddies. This opening cutscene is the best and deepest characterization we get for these guys. But my job is to give games a fair shake and look beyond what I want for my games to figure out what makes them great. So, here we go. They started buying up every farm for miles. Then the radio station. Not long after that, they even had the cops. With that said about the story lacking, if you dig and care to see, there's a lot of research and care that went into creating the cult. From the very start here, the tactics used for Eden's Gate are historically accurate within cults that still exist today. The most poignant one being FLDS, or <gasps> Fundamentalist Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints for long. Run by a man named Warren Jeffs. Hilldale, Utah, and Colorado City, Arizona, as of this video, are still under FLDS influence. Because of visitation laws, Jeffs still leads up to 10,000 people from behind bars. Yusuf talked to the most respected name in cult research and fighting cults. Rick Ross. No, not that Rick Ross. Rick Allen Ross. There we go. Which was a major guiding hand into creating Eden's Gate. Did I bring him up just to make that Rick Ross joke? Damn right I did. People don't want to believe groups like this exist. Ubisoft picked Montana because now we can't shy away from the fact that these cults exist. Today. Put their story on some island or way up in the mountains, there's a separation that keeps the game, well, a game. But with Far Cry 5, we are forced to see the true horrors of cults in America today. Ross is on record stating that Eden's Gate is not some over-exaggerated cult blown up to be entertaining for a video game. To beat the dead horse, this is real sh** going on in this game. Which makes Joseph the most terrifying villain in all of Far Cry for me. And Ross has been under direct personal attack from these cults he attempts to squash. From civil suits, to PIs following, to his name popping up in murder lists. Ross is directly in the firing line to take down cults for us. So, here's to you, Mr. Rick Ross. No, not that one! But I'm not the History Channel, so back to the game. We save those lost souls, whether they want to be saved or not. People don't want to believe groups like this exist. Let's talk about the critique many offered that this game is scared to say anything meaningful and real about religious radicalism, gun violence, and white America. Yes, at the time this game was released and everything surrounding it, it did seem like it was going to have something to say regarding those themes, and that Ubisoft were cowards for not attacking these themes. But not too long after playing it, you realize that this isn't a game about any of that. It's a game about cults. What they do, how they indoctrinate people, the tactics used, and the reality behind the fiction we find here. You can change the setting religion used with any and wouldn't have to change a thing about the story, because it's a cult about surviving and rejecting modern capitalism to form a new world after the old one falls. Some will wish to destroy all that we have built here together. Some will betray us. And when you're building a story, especially one that you want to resonate with as many people as possible, you don't want your themes to get into the specifics. Yes, there is a time and place for those stories to be told, and we need those stories, but come on. It's a billion dollar company that needs to make a return. Let's get real. We will never have a Ubisoft game that tackles the issues regarding modern day racism and rural religious white supremacy. Just not gonna happen. So instead of being angry that it didn't, I'm gonna have a blast paying attention to the things it actually wanted to say. And the fun choice of choosing a silent protagonist. More on this in a bit. Some will betray us. Okay, let's take a breather from all that together. <sighs> Greg Burke is so menacing with his performance. One look from him, and I've got brown pants. I have no faith, but I will make them see. You get it? The irony? He's poking out his eyes to make him see. Get it? Hallelujah. 
If you know, you know. Yeah, well, we have laws for a reason, Sheriff. And Joseph Seed's gonna learn that. This is just conjecture, like most of my channel, but I think Marshall is so adamant about taking down Joseph because he himself is religious and sees him as a stain on his beliefs. This is a bad idea. Last chance, Marshall. <sighs> We're going in. So each of our main protagonists are representations of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, coming in to usher in the end times for Eden's Gate. As we go, I'll tell you who I believe is who. To start though, I think the Marshal is war. The entire ride and walk up to the church, he's gung-ho about taking down Eden's Gate. The first to kill a Peggy, and him escaping the compound is the first full battle we have with Eden's Gate. What the hell is Elon Musk doing there, lighting a fire? Unrelated, but Joseph Seed is my workout goals. We will not let their greed! Or their immorality or their depravity hurt us anymore. See what I'm talking about with this cult being fueled by modern capitalism? We knew this moment would come. We've prepared for it. Go. Go. God will not let them take me. Voss was very aggro and off the cuff, pagan, very polite and hospitable, and Hoyt doesn't even count. What they do with Joseph here is a great way to set him apart and make him memorable to us. He approaches every situation with calm and empathy. He truly believes himself this world savior and protected by his divine right. Burke brings this haunting calmness to life perfectly, constantly juxtaposing how we'd expect the bad guy to act in situations such as this. I saw when the lamb opened the first seal and I heard, as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts say, come and see. Step forward. And I saw. Behold, it was a white horse. Joseph is quoting the book of Revelation. The opening of the seals marks the beginning of the apocalypse. Like I mentioned earlier, this group is the end times for Eden's Gate. And you notice that Joseph looks at the sheriff and says, White Horse. White Horse is his surname, and he is representative of the horsemen, pestilence, or, or conquest, whichever you want to subscribe to. Both work for the sheriff as he prefers strategy over Marshall's gung-ho attitude, and Pestilence works as he brings with him the plague that will wipe Eden's Gate clean. It was White Horse. And Hell followed with him. And he looks at the player on that line. Hell referring to Hades referring to the horseman Death, riding their pale horse. And it is quite apparent that we, the player, is Death as we kill our way through Hope County to destroy the Peggy Empire. To touch on the name Eden's Gate, the whole goal of the cult is to survive the inevitable apocalypse and have Joseph usher in Eden after the dust has settled, hence the name being Eden's Gate. The cult themselves building up a way to enter into Eden and also being the ones who decides who can enter. Rookie, cuff this son of a bitch. And here we get the choice of the secret quick ending. If we do nothing, Joseph will call back what the sheriff said in the helicopter. Sometimes it's best to leave well enough alone. And this line prompts the sheriff to be like, let's get the f out of here. Because Joseph quoting that can only mean that he was listening in on the radio comms. Back up. Back up. The score of Amazing Grace being outnumbered by Peggy, seeing their unrest and the level being bathed in this beautiful moonlight. This has got to be the most atmospheric Far Cry opening to date. Oh, that's brutal. You might have missed it. That Peggy on the front got shredded in the rotors. See what I'm talking about with Joseph's serenity juxtaposing situations? This could be for a multitude of reasons. Most likely Providence and his will to be stalwart in front of the cult. I told you that God wouldn't let you take me. Gosh, Burke is amazing. This entire time, Joseph is just staring into our souls. He doesn't even blink once until the very end. Everything is just fine here. I don't need to call anyone. Yes, Father. That's scary. But the people of Hope County did warn us that they'd infiltrated the fucking cops. No one is coming to save you. Bone chilling. Wow, I did not expect to have so much to say about this game in the first 15 minutes. But I'll say this. The story missions overall are lacking hard. But the stuff they do with the seed-specific missions are brilliant. And those will be my main focus of this video. Honestly, those story missions are just side quests that have no true impact on the plot and story. I don't know what the love for the shovel in this game is about. And at this point, I'm too afraid to ask. I know what you're thinking, and no. I ain't gonna have you climbing towers all over the county for me, so don't worry. <laughs> That's Ubisoft talking directly to us. You, me, 
Even the father knows deeply. Good God, that music for this cliche-ass promotional video is on point. I must be redeemed. Ew. There is a lot of hints to John being a sick sadist, so, um... Character continuity setting up his weird fetishes, I guess. And you will be offered atonement. Don't worry. You don't have to do anything. We'll come for you. See, after that, we shouldn't even be surprised and upset that they capture us eight separate times. And now our heroes are godless, weak, feeble, diseased. So I think that Pratt is the embodiment of the Black Horse Famine, as this entire process of brainwashing is meant to slowly break down individuals. This horseman is depicted with weighing scales, often, and we see Pratt being caught between weighing his allegiances between Rook and Jacob. And when you don't have food, your body breaks down and your mind follows. We let the weak dictate to the powerful and then we are shocked to find ourselves adrift. Eden's gate is all about surviving the apocalypse and creating a new. Jacob seems to be the one in charge of keeping new members strong. This ties perfectly into him having a wolf pack at his command. The alpha of a pack is always the strongest, leads attacks, and teaches their new members. Just like John is here. John's military history is what most likely afforded him the position. The song here is Only You, and talks about a one being the one to guide the singer properly. But also a very poignant line is, when you hold my hand, I understand the magic that you do. And this hand-holding and magic is about the conditioning Jacob is doing, and Rook being the only one able to kill Eli. So this has got to be the most interesting and innovative thing that Ubisoft does in Far Cry 5. And it's the classical conditioning that Jacob does to the player. And I do mean the player, not Rook. More on this in a bit. We go through this level one after another, learning exact enemy placements, the best weapons to use, and the fastest route to get through and the clock at the start to get lower and lower, but it doesn't matter because we basically speed run at the end. More on this in a second. The word at the end of the hall changes every time we do this level, and this first one is train. Right now, we are just training, getting our bearings in the level, and Jacob is seeing how we are taking to the conditioning. We don't even get to go all the way through the level this first time. Yes, sir. Someone shut that music off. Christ, it's silly. When did they get him? It's never stated, but I think it's okay to infer that we are the ones that killed these men. Check out what's on the wall. It's like Jacob is telling us that we are the one. White Tail's got you now. We're bringing him back to the Wolf's Den? I like the irony that the White Tail Malicious HQ is in a place called the Wolf's Den. With Jacob's affinity for them, you'd think they'd pick a name like Rabbit's Retreat or something. You've been in that room for God knows how long. I've seen what it does to people. You haven't. You can't trust this one. For those paying good attention throughout the entirety of Jacob's missions, there are enough hints to piece together the eventual murder that we do to Eli. I took my fingers and I put them on that little plastic tube that was taped to her angelic face and I pinched it shut. And after a little while, her legs began to kick in and kick in. And then nothing. Well, uh, <laughs> if we weren't certain about him being insane beforehand, we sure as hell are now. It's scary how cold and heartless he is telling the story. He shows so much empathy for others, but he's got none for himself or his daughter. And it's scarier knowing that things like this actually happen all the time. If you want to know about a horrible cult in real life, just go look up the People's Temple cult founded by Jim Jones. Now the word is hunt. We've got a good idea about the level itself physically, and now it's time to learn exactly who we want to kill in what order to get through it the fastest. Now that we've shown promise to the conditioning and have gotten in cahoots with the white tails, we're able to finish the entire mission. Again, we are surrounded by dead bodies, and it can only be us that did it. That's the ultimate fuck you to someone that you've broken. Reeks got a knife to his throat and can't kill him. And by the eighth day, the wolves were closing in. Miller's sacrifice wasn't about me walking out of that desert. It was about bringing me here. The weak have their purpose. Now we understand Jacob's connection with wolves and using the weak. The wall now says kill, meaning you know your targets, your route. And now just kill, kill, kill. And get through this. I'm gonna get you out of here, okay? And we're gonna get out of here, okay? Only you, only you. Notice how he repeated only you? He's been brainwashed like no other, but he's trying to fight it. Look. Trials. See? He's got it all planned out. Here's the big hint thrown at us to figure out his plan before it happens. One, two, 
two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, one, two, three, then he's got you. It becomes second nature routine. He gets in your head. And you don't even realize it. What Jacob is doing to us is called classical conditioning. And Brad is right. We don't realize or know what he's intended or that this shooting gallery even has an effect on the game world. More on this in a second. You guys are loving me right now. Sorry. Pratt knows what Rook has been conditioned to do and is either trying to kill Rook or knock them out to not have them go through with the plan. I told you, you're not a hero. You are a tool. You know your purpose. I love this. This is one of those things that only a video game can do. Only a video game can condition the actual person experiencing the media to do something like accidentally kill Eli. It's Far Cry 5's greatest strength since they went for the silent protagonist. A lot of the themes are centered around the way the player is forced to interact with the game and that we do it without question. There is no ludo narrative dissonance and that's something I've always applauded in all Far Cry games. We murder hundreds if not thousands of people throughout each of these titles and they address it. And here at the last one is sacrifice. Sacrifice Eli to end the conditioning. Sacrifice yourself and kill Eli. We only start with 15 seconds. Like it matters because we are pros at this now. If you pay attention, everyone after the slide isn't turning into smoke. They are spraying blood and dying. More hints to what's really going on. We're in the wolves' den. See, they got my ass. I shot the hell out of Eli. <laughs> What Jacob is doing is called classical conditioning, like I mentioned, and the trigger for Rook is the song, and for us, it's the same goddamn shooting gallery over and over again. By the time the fourth one hits, we know how to go through it with speed and not caring because there are no consequences. And that's how they got us, the player, to kill Eli. We know we are supposed to turn that corner and pull the trigger, and we are conditioned to do it without question. Jacob got into our heads. You're alone. And you're weak. And we know what happens to the weak. Used us just like he used Miller. I don't know if he talks to God. That doesn't matter. He was right. Humanity is once again in crisis. Another big theme in Far Cry 5 is the cyclical nature of humanity. We start from nothing, build up. By every time the end comes, we cause the destructions ourselves, either intentionally or inadvertently. And we see this on display with Eden's Gate. Their actions drew Rook to Hope County, and Rook is the downfall of Eden's Gate. Well, kinda. Not really. You'll see. You did everything he said you would do. And you didn't even know it. And this conditioning angle branches out farther than just Jacob's section. It's this game being in tune with its ludo narrative dissonance. We run around Hope County killing outposts, animals, and everything in between. Joseph knew through God or just being around the block enough to know exactly what we do. This angle comes up best at the end, and I'll finish my thoughts about that there. They made me strong. And now, they are weak. And the weak must be called. Well, it looks like Jacob's conditioning hasn't left him. But at least now, he's using it against Eden's Gate. He fought the government. He fought me. <laughs> wow, that little laugh is just so... human. Seeing him talk after each of the family's deaths is always a treat. Jacob's death will not be in vain. Gary Burke's Joseph Seed could totally be a lead villain in a horror game. Every scene he is in is so haunting. Faith's region is called Henbane, and the Henbane flower in real life has hallucinogenic qualities to it, and was an inspiration for the bliss. She was all alone. She wanted to die, and then she met the father. This story is obviously her personal story, and it just goes to show how powerful cult leaders could be. This story tries to blur the lines and show the good that cults can provide. Rachel, I mean, Faith was being abused and doing coke and heroin and through whatever Joseph did, got her off of it. I mean, that's no easy feat, and after something like that, you can kind of understand why people are drawn to someone like him. If you look at Faith's left arm, you can see the chemical formula for cocaine and scopolamine tattooed. Just like with the other seeds, her sins have been pushed onto her body. You'll notice that Faith is never once shown wearing shoes. I'm gonna chalk this up to her hippie days before she switched to the hard stuff. The path to Eden is clear to those who have faith. 
Faith isn't her name. Faith is a title bestowed upon those that pick up the mantle of this responsibility for Eden's Gate. Her actual name is Rachel. There have been about three or four other Faiths before. And here's a win for Ubisoft, still sticking to their guns with weird drug trip sequences for their Far Cry games. Definitely a little Assassin's Creed nod. Hey look, that's a cute little jackalope if you weren't certain that what's happening is not real. People say that I'm crazy. I'm using every fiber of my being not to put in the clip of the Joker saying that he's not crazy from the Dark Knight. This? This is the world we built for our children? The cult is all about the failings of everyone. Our failings. And a villain done right is when they kind of have a point and make sense. Joseph's got a case. This world we've built isn't perfect, and we've f***ed up a lot along the way. And hearing him makes us want to look at the mirror and do some self-reflection. And we are hurtling towards our destruction, and no one is willing to do anything about it. I can see that. You can see. I mean, we're like one computer malfunction or a Taiwan invasion away from it, so he's not wrong. It's been long enough. I would be remiss not to talk about the amazing score by Dan Romano because, oh my God, is it so goddamn good at every turn? Have you heard We Will Rise Again? He's got amazing original scores, original songs with lyrics and cult-like interpretations of classic hymns. There was so much music made for this game and it's all stellar. Please go look it up and listen to it. I promise you it's worth it. Also, you can be what? A hero? And listen to that. She's talking to us, the player. We've killed our way through Hope County to try and save it, to be the hero, since that's what we expect to do and be in a Far Cry game. And we're being questioned, as the player, if it's all worth it. Do you know what hubris is? Me breaking things down on this channel? Arrogance before the gods. <laughs> I was right. If violence is the only language you choose to speak, I'll speak your language. And I love the trying to do, but it kind of falls flat a little bit because we don't get a real choice to not be violent. We get that one choice at the start, but how cool would it be if we could choose to do a non-lethal run, spare the seeds, and actually arrest them? And not having that option be glaringly obvious. This would make their thesis that we as gamers are violent and love killing video games have a bit more merit as the gameplay offers something else to engage in. But alas, that's not a thing, and still no game has tackled the connection between player and player character and game world and story as well as Bioshock did. You know, with how good a time Sheriff seems to be having, I kind of want to try the bliss. What's the saying? Try everything once and the good things twice? A slippery slope, but f*** it. He understands its purpose, and he'll join our family in Eden. And if you try to stop him... <laughs> Damn, Janessa Grant is so good as Faith. So sweet, innocent one moment, and channeling Joseph's hauntedness the next. You strike, but you cannot destroy what he created! I mean, in the end she's right. You think I wanted this? He plied me with drugs, he threatened me. I was 17! I was just a child! Now this gets the meat computer moving. Is she telling the truth? Or is this just more manipulation? I'm gonna go with the former because Joseph did what any cult leader would do, and he preyed on someone at their most vulnerable and twisted their mind to do what he wanted. And with Faith's position, notes, and speculation can lead us to believe that if the current Faith isn't doing a good enough job, Joseph will remove them and find a new, better Faith. So at this point, everything Rachel is doing is just for survival in my mind. It makes her so much more tragic. Talk about a peaceful death scene. I put my faith inside her. And she became angelic. Ugh, maybe I'm too jaded, but that's got implications I do not like. And walk through his gates. So John's name is John. And he's baptizing people. Just like a certain John the Baptist. Shh. Mark cleansing John. No, Joseph. You have to love them, John. Do not let your sin prevent that. John's big sin is his weird sadism that we are getting just a tiny little hint towards with his face before he dunks us again. And Joseph reminds him to love and remove his sin from the equation. Despite all that you have done, you are not beyond salvation. See, this is the thing. I've killed two of his family and he's still like, we can do this. Joseph's a lot like Pagan in a way, as he's never outwardly aggressive towards the player and only seeks to help. Pay close attention to that Bible. 
What horseman is Hudson? Well, in terms of horsemen, we are out of horsemen. So we're just going to move on and not think about it too hard. <laughs> I'm kidding. If she had to be one, she would share famine with Pratt. As she's in the agricultural region of Jonathan. And the black horse's appearance is the only one accompanied by a voice. And notice the irony of Hudson's mouth being taped shut? Also, also, the person that hears this vocalization is John. Check out who's in the room. My parents were the first ones to teach me about the power of yes. They threw me on the ground and I experienced pain after pain after pain after pain. After pain. And look at that. We are all just products of our childhood. John is the sadistic man he is now because of the abuse he received from his parents. Hold still. It's supposed to say wrath, not rat. When tattooing words, you work from the inside out. Attention to detail. God! See? I told you. Chekhov's Bible gun. What if Joseph is right? Did you ever stop to think about... John C. dies at 32, just like John the Baptist. Another seal has been opened. My family, my brothers, my sisters, they've been taken from me! I love, love... Love seeing Joseph finally crack under all that's been done to him. He can only stay calm for so long. By a snake in the garden! And that's not is 100% real. Gary Burke got so into it that it just came flying out, and director Dan Hay insisted that every bit of this performance, down to the snot, stay intact. I thought I knew God's plan. <laughs> But I was wrong. And am I feeling bad for Joseph? That's what great acting and music can do to you. You took my family from me so that I could have yours. Hey, he warned us about blissing all of our friends in the end. Bookends! So in defense to you basically neutering Eden's gate and somehow at the end Joseph gets control of everyone, I'm going to say this is why Joseph has been so calm the entire game. He knew he had the bliss in his back pocket. And he took a big liking to try and save the player character. That's why we were never killed after being caught. Joseph wants every trance to try and save Rook. And check that out. It's every single side character we've interacted with. When you're going to realize that every problem cannot be solved with a bullet. When Ubisoft gives me a choice in the matter that offers meaningful gameplay. In the face of God, I'm making you that offer one last time. You've killed his family and he's still offering us the chance to leave. Now that's a stand-up dude. I know it's a hollow choice because he's got contingencies, but still. Take your friends, my child. Go. I chose to walk away while playing through this because I was just so angry and upset about how much I didn't enjoy this game. I was like, yeah, fuck it. Bad guy gets to win because I should have walked away at the start and never played this game. But alas, I don't regret it because I've had a really good time making this video about a game that I didn't enjoy. We're going to get the National Guard and we're going to bring the hammer down on that goddamn place. Hey, the sheriff's got a plan. So Far Cry 5, it's no secret that I did not like this game. And after going through it with a fine tooth comb, I have a greater appreciation for it. Still don't like it, but I have appreciation for it. There is a really compelling story about a cult that's trying to provide salvation from a world that is tearing itself apart. But it gets so lost in all the menial bullshit tasks that you do between main missions that I couldn't be bothered to care. The game is carried by the seeds because every other character gets nothing to work with and are boring cut and paste archetypes. This was an interesting video to make because I didn't touch on a lot of it. And I recognize that. But I hope you still enjoyed and understand at least to a degree why I didn't even bother with the other story missions. I don't feel like they had enough meat on their bones to talk about and I didn't enjoy personally playing through it. And I can only be objective for so long before I go crazy, so. Remember, drive the speed limit, drink some water, and love one another. Pizza!